Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here answering your questions today. Today's question is on the language barrier at the MLB level. So how do players communicate with each other when they're not able to speak the same language. Obviously, there's a ton of players from Latin America, there's uh, players from Asia, and so there's players from all over the, the world. And a lot of times, players either speak broken English or some players don't speak any English at all. So how do players talk? How do you go over strategy? How do you become friends with players that are on your team that you may not be able to talk to? So I'm gonna give you my experience. Um, and typically in the major leagues, um, there's some players that don't speak English. But for me, a lot of times it's the minor leagues. That's where you see a, a whole lot of players that don't speak English, especially at the low minor leagues. Uh, when I got injured and went to rookie ball, it felt like 70% of the team was Latin players that couldn't speak English or spoke very little English. Okay, So let's kind of talk about that and how you go about communicating with these players. Okay, first thing is baseball, obviously, there's a lot of communicating that has to happen as far as strategy. So as a middle infielder, as a middle infielder, I had to talk with my other middle infielder about all types of things. Who's covering the bag? Uh, you had to communicate on double play turns. You had to communicate on cutoffs and relays and all that stuff. And so that's a challenge. Um, even more than that is pitcher and catcher. So a lot of times you might have a pitcher that speaks English and a catcher that speaks Spanish or vice versa. Um, so how do, how do those guys communicate with each other? So what I saw is a couple things, okay? First off, at times, players will have translators, okay? But this isn't as frequent as you may think. And actually, usually, um, in the major leagues I played with, uh, Tadahide Oguchi, I think his name was, he was, was he Japanese, I believe? He was an Asian player, and he had an interpreter. So he had an interpreter that was with him all the time. And so basically, when you wanted to talk to him, um, he kind of seemed to understand the language, but he couldn't really speak it as well. So he'd kind of talk, and the interpreter would help him out, okay? So I've seen that happen a few times. Um, with the Latin players, with players that spoke Spanish, usually there wasn't an interpreter. Although sometimes you'd have a manager or a coach or somebody on the coaching staff, a trainer maybe, that could speak Spanish, okay? Especially in the minor league levels, but even in the major league levels. So sometimes those, those coaches or trainers will kind of help translate some of the stuff if the players weren't able to communicate, all right? So that was helpful. The other thing is, and what I kind of try to do is, so I was, I, I was, not, I was not able to speak Spanish, but I took Spanish my whole life, okay? So I took Spanish in high school, I took Spanish in college, and so I at least knew some Spanish. And I actually found it really, really interesting when I was in the minors, when I first got drafted and went to uh, single A, I went to uh, short season A ball in Eugene, uh, Oregon. A lot of our team, if I don't know the percentage, but it felt like maybe half, but it probably wasn't that much, but there were a lot of players that spoke Spanish. And there were a lot of players that didn't really speak any English. Like it was not broken English. It was like very, very, very little English. And so I actually enjoyed it because I got to see for the first time in my life, you know, when I'm practicing Spanish in school, it's like, I'm, yeah, I'm talking or I'm trying to speak Spanish and understand Spanish, but I'm talking with other people that don't speak the language either. So we're all kind of in the same boat. This is the first time where I'm speaking Spanish or trying to understand Spanish with players that are fluent in Spanish and they don't know English. And so it was really, really interesting to see, like, could I actually do it? And I actually made a whole lot of friends that spoke just Spanish. So a lot of Dominican, we had a lot of Dominican players that year. And I ended up making a lot of friends with the Dominican players because usually what happens in pro ball is like, you know, in Eugene when we're playing, you have all the Spanish speaking players uh, over here and all the American players over here and not because they don't want to, but because no one can talk to each other. And so, you know, on the bus, you've got your, you've got to divide. In the clubhouse, you got to divide. On the field, sometimes you got to divide. And so 
Um, I made a lot of friends because I literally tried to speak Spanish, even though it was horse, you know what, Spanish. Like they're probably like, dude, this guy thinks he can speak Spanish and he's an idiot. He can't speak any Spanish. But I could, I could understand enough and speak a little bit so that I could actually try to have conversations with them. And I think they liked that I was trying to, even though I, I stunk at it, I was at least putting forth an effort. And like I said, I ended up making a lot of friends um, and there'd be days where I'd go eat lunch, you know, like I said, uh, in the clubhouse, a lot of times, you know, you eat lunch and you get all your, you know, the group of Dominican players over here and a group, group of American players over here. And I would go over, not like every day, but I'd go over and have lunch with like the, the guys and try to learn more Spanish and try to teach them some more English. And a lot of them would actually like want me to try to help them. And so that was really, really cool. It was actually a really cool part of playing professional baseball is having the opportunity to do that. I would have never done that if I wasn't playing baseball. So that was cool. Um, and then I ended up uh, taking some of those players. And I remember Chad Huffman and I, we would take some of the players, take uh, Jesus Lopez was our shortstop. He was a, a Mexican player. I remember taking him. We would take him to dinner some nights. And, uh, you know, because a lot of those guys they would just go to the same places all the time and eat. It would be all like, you know, Jesus would go to these Mexican restaurants all the time and he'd go with the other Mexican players. And so I remember Chad and I took him to um, a nice Italian place one night and he's like, I don't think he'd ever really eaten an Italian place before. We are trying to teach him what like spaghetti and meatballs were and uh, trying to make him order and trying to teach him how to order and all that stuff. And it was really, really I mean, it was, in, it was really cool and interesting. And again, something that I'd never done before and would never, I haven't done that since. But those are the kind of things that I remember that were cool, being able to make friends with players. Again, it's, like Jesus didn't really speak any English at all, like maybe a couple of words. But he started to learn as we went along and we tried to teach him. And um, yeah, it was something, it was, it's actually one of the things that I remember most about some of those lower levels in the minor leagues was trying to communicate. And when I ended up getting hurt, I broke my hand, had wrist surgery. When I went down to the very low minors, went to rookie ball, that like the whole team like spoke Spanish. And again, I, I think they always thought it was interesting when I come down there and I like, I'd go over and start trying to talk Spanish with them and, and make friends with them. And I don't think a lot of players were used to that, obviously, because not a lot of American players could speak any Spanish or wanted to speak any Spanish. And, and I did. So made a lot of good friends. Um, and uh, learned, learned a lot of Spanish, although now I've been out of baseball for a while. And as you move up, you know, you get to the, you get to the higher minors is typically, I feel like there's less and less players that just speak Spanish, even though the major leagues has a ton of Dominican players in it. Um, the low minors have way more. And so my Spanish kind of, I stopped using it. And literally since I stopped playing baseball in 2013, I haven't spoken one word of Spanish since. And I used to do it a lot, you know crappy Spanish, but I used to do it. And now I haven't done it at all. So uh, I actually want to learn. I want to learn Italian now, actually. I want to be able to go to Italy and be able to speak fluently in Italian. I keep saying I want to do it. I bought the Rosetta Stone, which was like a ton of money. And uh, one thing about Rosetta Stone, actually, this is kind of off subject. Rosetta Stone is like really cool for like the first CD or first few sessions. And then all of a sudden, just one day you go from like learning colors and numbers and all this stuff to one day they just decide to like take all the English away and they're just spitting Spanish like paragraphs at or Italian paragraphs at you and you're totally lost and I you give up because there's no so if anyone's done Rosetta Stone before please tell me if you've actually learned anything from it because I learned some basic words and then it goes from like the beginner to like the expert in one CD and, and then you're like, I, I don't know what to do, I'm stuck. And you stop doing it. So um, let me know what to do with that if you have any experience with Rosetta Stone. Anyways, that's kind of how the language barrier happens. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I kind of rambled a little bit about my experiences in the low minors, but I think that's kind of interesting stuff and uh, brings back some good memories for me as well. So let me know if you have any more questions in the comment section below, subscribe to the channel, uh, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Check out the description box below. We've got a deal going on. Plate Crate, click the link, type in Antonelli, get 50% off your first Plate Crate. Also have a link to our Patreon page where you can support the channel. Um, if you guys want these hats, I keep getting people asking about them. Go to our website, AntonelliBaseball.com. You can grab them there. And uh, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it.
We'll talk to you later.